coming up on today's message with Pastor Johnny. It's fake news that where you start in life is where you're going to finish. It's fake news if somebody told you you ain't going to never amount to nothing and that's what they believe. It's fake news when somebody calls you not a child of God. It's fake news. All of that stuff is that it's fake news when they tell you that you can't do what you're trying to do because the real news says that I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gave me strength. It's fake news when they talk about your past and count it against you because the real news says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and all the old things have passed away. It's real news his eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what God has in store for you. So just because they knew you then, how you like me now? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to participate in your word, Lord God, to worship you, to dwell in your presence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. Hide me behind your cross. Allow me to decrease so that you increase. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to the gospel according to Luke, starting with the 21st verse of uh, chapter 4. Luke 4, 21, and I'll be reading all the way down uh, to 30. And when you have it, I'd ask all that are physically able to please stand for the reading of God's word. Again, that's the gospel according to Luke. Fourth chapter, 21st verse. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And he began to say to them, he being Jesus, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months. And there was a great famine throughout all the land, but to none of them was Elijah sent except for Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel at the time of Elijah the prophet, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. So all those in the synagogue, when they'd heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him to the brow of the hill of the, uh, on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. God's word for God's people and God's people said amen. amen. You may be seated. Uh, for the time that we're going to spend uh, together in the word, I want to talk about fake news. Fake news. We're only 30 uh, plus days past uh, 2018 and looking back at some of the major themes and conversations and issues of 2018 in no particular order, immigration, uh, Me Too, 
Russian interference in the 2016 election and fake news. Fake news. It's pretty popular now, but uh, it's not a new concept. Uh, matter of fact, it's, it's been around for a while, and, and uh, John Stewart on uh, The Daily Show back in 2005 covered uh, 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 fake news. And they were doing that along with Stephen Colbert when they assessed the news of today. Uh, the, the term's been around for a while, the concept has been around for a while, but it's gotten pretty popular in the past couple years. I'm not sure why, but, uh, uh, but it's gotten popular in the past two years or so. Uh, 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 fake news seems to be on everybody's mind in a way that it hasn't been in the past. And the idea of fake news refers to published information intentionally designed to mislead. Fake news has many names. Propaganda, misinformation, yellow journalism, libel, false stories, and even lies. Here are some examples of some actual fake news that's been published. Uh, White House GOP train crash was a deep state assassination attempt. NFL lawyer who claimed that the Super Bowl is rigged found dead. FBI Antifa, which is slang for anti-fascist, planning a Super Bowl terrorist attack. Pedophile priest with HIV that uh, infected 30 children found crucified outside of his church. Fake news. And the problem with the fake news is that, well, there, there are two problems with the fake news. Uh, one there are, there's the stories that are completely untrue. And then two, because it's run so rampant, when you hear something you don't like, you tend to label that fake news. Uh, they, people have broadened the concept of fake news to mean any reports or political news they don't like, regardless of the veracity of the information but not only the, the news, but the source of the news. So there are people out there that say if it doesn't happen on Fox News, it didn't happen. There are people out there that say if it didn't happen on CNN, it didn't happen. They immediately attack the source because they don't want to hear what's being said. It's a new version of killing the messenger. You don't like the political viewpoint that somebody's saying? You don't like the, where somebody's coming from with their information? No problem, it's fake news in the discussion. No matter what they tried to say. And it's interesting because that is exactly what was happening when Jesus got up into the synagogue on the Sabbath, as was his custom, in the synagogue on a regular basis, which was his custom, in the synagogue on a regular basis, which was his custom. Amen. And he read, and uh, we covered it last week, but just for recap, he pulled out the scrolls, which happened to be uh, what we would call Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2, and Isaiah 58, 6, and read, talking about the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he read the scroll, and then he sat down for a sermon, and he told them that today... What has the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing? And the people's response, fake news. No, that's not what we're looking for. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. No, it, it ain't on you. It can't be on you. We know you. You grew up around here. You Joseph's boy. But that's fake news, that Jesus is Joseph's boy. 
Ah, but but the, the, these things were going on, and they, 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 they got the source. And so after reading the text, Jesus tells the congregation that the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And so he says, he's declaring that the, the parts of these two verses he put together in red did comprise a mission statement about his work. That's what he was here to do. And he was there to do it. And the thing that's interesting is that, that, that the, 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 the congregation's response is initially positive. Uh, in, in the text it says that today, when he says today, uh, well, the scripture's been in your hearing in 21. In verse 22, it says, all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? I know him. They marveled at what he said. They, they liked what he said. Jesus was saying that the Messiah that Isaiah was prophesying about uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago was here right before your very eyes. And there's a tension between the reading of the word and the sermon. And it says that all the eyes were fixed on him. And these hundreds of years came and it says that they bore witness to his words. But the sermon was good until they started thinking about what that actually meant. Pastor show preached a good sermon, but then when it come time to do what Pastor said, uh -huh. All right. I don't know how I feel about that. They started thinking about what this actually meant to them. This wasn't what they were looking for. These people were looking for a militaristic savior. They were looking for somebody to overthrow the Roman government. And here this person comes talking about he's going to save their souls and remove the oppression, the spiritual oppression, the state of sin. They weren't here for that. And so when they didn't tell, when, when they didn't hear what they wanted to hear from Jesus, they dismissed what he had to say. I don't know any place else where people don't like what somebody has to say, and so they dismiss it. I mean, maybe I'll come up with an example before the sermon's over, but I can't really think of some places where somebody don't like what they're hearing from somebody and automatically discount it just based on what was said. I'll come up with something before the sermon's over, but I, I, I'll think about it. But they bore witness to his words, preach, pastor, preach. But then when it came time to live the sermon, I don't know about all that. When it came time to be a believer outside of an hour or an hour and a half once a week, I don't know how I feel about that. And so he gave them two illustrations from the Old Testament of why he could not perform miracles in Nazareth. He had been all over performing miracles, uh, things that weren't even written about. He was well into his ministry before he came home. He was well into his ministry. And so he gave them these examples of Elijah and Elisha and basically was telling them that there were a bunch of people that needed help. But only a handful of people got help because they were willing to do what God said. Time and time again, when I look at people who are talented in something that they do, who are successful in something that they do, uh, whether it be music or, or business or, or athletics, they're not born the biggest, the fastest, the strongest. But they do put the most work in. Amen. They're willing to do what other people are not willing to do. Because if you always do what you've always done, you're going to always get what you've always gotten. They say that the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. So here he pointed out a couple of, a couple of prophets and understood that they tried, that a bunch of people were available for help, but only a handful of people got the help when he talked about Elijah and Elisha. In the time of Elijah was a period where the heavens were shut up for three and a half years. And it was interesting, by about the time Jesus came to talk to these people, uh, the Syrians had been oppressing them for about three and a half years. And it also, what also had the problem with them is that they, it didn't conform to the commonly uh, held understanding of the Messiah. They were looking for somebody to physically fight. 
They were looking for somebody to save them by completely militaristically removing the, the, the oppression that they were under. And so because Jesus didn't fit into their preconceived notion of the Messiah, because Jesus didn't look like the Messiah that they wanted to have, Jesus didn't look like the type of person that they were de demanding or expecting to happen, because he didn't fit that mold that they had in their mind, they dismissed what he had to say. And so to them, they talk, and Jesus is over here talking about uh, people of God. And not only that, the problem that they had with the leper and the widow is those people weren't in the family. Uh, when you go back and look in, in, in uh, the, the, the story of Elijah and Elisha, what he's talking about, uh, the, the, the widow that got helped was a Syrian woman. And, and the leper that got helped was was a uh, no no the, the the widow was a gentile widow rather and the the leper that got helped was a Syrian soldier, so these weren't upstanding church folk. That name had been on the roll of the church for a long time. They couldn't quote uh, uh, the hymnal back and forth without uh, opening it up. These were people who were outside of the faith, and and these these prophets helped them did nobody want to hear the church folk didn't want to hear about they they had known these stories because they spent time searching the scripture but jesus is giving them an example when they are talking about don't we know you is this not joseph's son he brings up examples of the 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 people uh the pastor helping people outside of the church so you ain't the type of savior we was looking for and not only are you not the type of savior we was looking for you gonna come here and talk about helping people outside of the synagogue fake news I don't want to hear that but he said what he was here to do bring good news to the poor release proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight of the blind and let the oppressed go free and, and, and claim the acceptable year of the Lord's favor and I would submit to you that I got another reason I think they didn't like what he had to say so I said that when when I when when, when uh, he quotes it he talks about uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and heal the brokenhearted. That's all of Isaiah 61 uh, verses 1 and 2. But the, the B clause of 61 verse 2 talks about exacting the vengeance on the Lord, uh, of the Lord rather. It talks about that. And he skips over that part. and goes back up to 58 and talking about uh, proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. So he didn't read what they wanted to hear. So what, wait, you're not here to fight. You talking about saving souls instead of fighting the, the people. You talking about say, helping people outside of the church and I can't get my revenge? Fake news. Fake news. I ain't got time for that. And so you done took out my, and not only have you, you helping out the other people, you taking away my favoritism. I'm supposed to have some status. My name in the program. I'm important. Well, praise God you in the family, but Jesus told us to go out and make disciples. So it's not just about those who are inside the building. We ought to be growing and, and, and on and on as Christians, but we also need to be going out to get other people. Amen. It's not about us. And so they're not proclaiming the vengeance of the Lord. In Isaiah 61, 2, he did, they, they did not want to hear that. And so this went against the popular expectation of what the Messiah was supposed to do. And so you had these people with these illustrations, and he had this identification, I'm the Messiah. That's the identification. The person that we are reading about in this text is right in front of you, and then he went to these illustrations and let them know that not only are he the Messiah, he ain't going to save the way you would like him to save, and he going to save outsiders. 
This went against what they were looking for. This wasn't no powder puff preaching. It's hard to want to help the outside people. It's hard to be a Christian. It's hard to want to do these things and do them consistently because you'll get out there and try to help people and they don't want your help and they don't respond to it. And you get a little frustrated. And sometimes you you out here trying to, to, to witness to the people and you paying for the sins of somebody you ain't never met. They holding on to church hurt from years and years and years ago. But we still got to be willing to reach out to those who are not like us. Yes, sir. Amen. That's real news. And so he cites these, these illustrations and the illustrations are met with contempt. Uh, Jesus makes them so mad that they actually try to kill him. Anger and violence are sometimes the last offense of those who must face the truth of their own religious aff affirmations. Right there in the scriptures, they are showing mercy to those people that we're not supposed to like. They're showing mercy to Gentiles. They're showing mercy to Syrians. They're showing mercy to people who don't regularly come to church. They're showing mercy to those who don't believe. They're showing mercy that don't look like a grow up in the same neighborhood that you grew up in. They're showing mercy to those who may not have as much money in their pocket as you. They're showing mercy to the least, the last, and the lost. They're showing mercy to the poor. They're showing mercy to the oppressed. They're showing mercy to the brokenhearted. And it's all being led because the spirit of the Lord is upon him. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. Amen. And anger and violence is the only way they knew how to respond. We don't like change. We got in our minds the way a day is supposed to go. We got in our minds the way everything we thinking about is supposed to handle, be handled, whether it be a school, a job, the church, be it our interactions with our friends. No matter what it is, we got it in our mind how it's supposed to go. And don't let it go like that for a long time. Because the moment somebody tries to change that, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a misunderstanding, and that's what happened to the people of God. These people were in the church, and when Jesus came in and told them that this way you've been doing it is not the way it's going to go on, they got mad. We know you. We know where you've grown up. We know your mama. We know your daddy. We know your brothers and sisters. We know what street you live on. Who are you to try to tell us how to live as believers? Is the, is the microphone still working? But that's fake news. It's fake news that where you start in life is where you're going to finish. It's fake news if somebody told you you ain't going to never amount to nothing and that's what they believe. It's fake news when somebody calls you not a child of God. It's fake news. All of that stuff is that it's fake news when they tell you that you can't do what you're trying to do because the real news says that I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gave me strength. It's fake news when they talk about your past and count it against you because the real news says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and all the old things have passed away. It's real news is eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what God has in store for you. So just because they knew you then, how you like me now? There's mercy to be shown to the Gentiles. There's new things to be done. And these people are mad because they thought they had this exclusive VIP access relationship to God that couldn't nobody else have. Right. What you doing putting this all out there? This is for us. This is our social club. 
How dare you? We can't do that. You got to go. And so they tried to kill him. They got angry. They got really angry. They tried to throw him off a cliff. But I like that uh, they tried to throw him off a cliff and because it wasn't his time. They got him all the way to the cliff and he just walked away and went his way. So the response to all of that is to just move on. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep stepping on the way. Don't worry about what all these haters got to say. Just keep on pushing forward. That's the real news. He understood that this was not his time. And even though these people were mad about what he had to say, he still had a job to do. He still had some place to be. He still had sick people to heal. He still had blind people to make see. He still had lame folk to make walk. He still had a job to do. So when these things happened, even though they were calling out the fake news, he showed them some real news. He went on to feed the multitude. He went on to heal the sick and raise the dead. He went all the way to Calvary because that was the real news. That's what his job was supposed to be. He went on that cross because that was the real news. He got nailed in his hands and pierced in his side and a crown of thorn on his head. That was the real news. He got buried in a tomb. That was the real news and he laid there for three days but early on the third day he got up with all power in his hands that is the real news in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit the doors of the church are open and we invite you to come thank you for listening to this message be sure to subscribe to us on youtube itunes google play stitcher or wherever you found this message if this message blessed you be a blessing to someone else and share it Connect with Pastor Johnny on Instagram and Twitter, and be sure to like Faith UMC Dickinson on Facebook.